fantastic Central edition of Bell the Bell with Bobby Blaze. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Oh, good lord. I want some of it. It looks, looks orgasmic. Gangrel was number five, and that's Dave Heath. And I met Dave when he was breaking in. He got his first break in the territory up in Calgary. He was leaving when I come to Malenko's. He had been under trainer for a couple of years in wrestling. Obviously, he wasn't training. He was just tuning up to go up to, to Calgary. Dave is a hell of a good guy. But, yeah, when you add in the lightning and the blood and, and the gimmick of the um, white shirt and the look and the people they put you around, you have to get that character over. And Dave uh, Gangrel got it over really, really good. But also at that production, you know, just the everything that went with that. Go ahead, Jeremy. Tell him a little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean. He yeah, was scary. He was scary. He looks, he, he had those weird uh, contact lenses, made yeah. his eyes just not quite the right color. He had the vampire fangs. He was also, he was one of those guys, his gimmick was perfect for the time it was premiered. Yeah. Hot Topic was just hitting all the malls. You know, uh, interview with the vampire had just come out. So the I, gothic... I was going to, the reference I had was interview with the vampire on that. Yeah. Thank, thank so that you. gothic vampire kind of thing yes. was was hot. It was top of mind. Uh, the spraying of the blood. Also, you know, now Gingrail was a name that the WWE licensed from a role playing game company who did a vampire role playing game. Oh, really? Yeah. So kind of like back when it, he was the Incredible Hulk Hogan, they had to pay Marvel for Gangrel. They had to pay for rights to use that name. But it also okay. it also helped get from wrestling pop culture into vampire pop culture because now you have the synergy of the branding and the style, and it's kind of a nudge, nudge, wink, wink to people who are playing the vampire games and really into it, you know? Amazing, you know, I was a big fan of the movie The Lost Boys, so I was yeah. constantly trying to push that whole thing about the, a group of vampires, a group of vampires, yeah. and then I finally, from 1991, I tried to convince them, and wow. finally in 98, I said, we get what you're doing, and <laughs> okay, we get what you're saying, we get what you're saying, yeah. we'll, we'll do it, and that was with Christian and Edge, and it was an amazing time, they were amazing talents. Yeah. And the Hardys, you know, I don't think Everything. the Brood could have been the Brood without the Hardys because they, they made the Brood, that feud all together. And then the latter matches with them made Christian and Edge and ENC and on to the bigger career. So they're, they're great, and I'm happy for all four of those guys. We could have put Vampiro in there. And the reason we didn't, and Jeremy knows a little bit more Vampiro than I do, but I was uh, I got to work with Vampiro, and he's a hell of a talented guy. But um, he was a huge baby face when he broke in down in Mexico, and he just had this following, a cult following. And I don't, I think, Jeremy, did you say like more to Mexican fans that was a, a Mexican wrestlers organization would know who Vampiro was. And, um, <clears throat> and also he had a good little run in WCW, but it wasn't as strong as it could have been. I think he had some issue with the office or something with his contract. I'm not really sure. Yeah. I mean, we could have put Vampiro in here and actually I'd forgotten about it till you were talking. But yeah, I mean, Gangrel, you know, I don't want to get too off the topic about him. No, no, no. He was, he was perfect. You know, I, I believe the Hardy Boys were introduced as his brood originally, or was it Edge and Christian? Uh, you know, but I, you know what? I think was, was it not Edge and Christian? And I then think the Hardys? it was, I think that was it. I think he had them both, okay. in, but it was first yeah. in, but, but Luna Vachon was, right. was one of his, uh, people. It was just a right time and the right place. And I understand he's still wrestling, but it's under the name Vampire Warrior now. I believe. Yeah, and I know he's always doing fanging and banging. And mm -hmm. uh, he's got a school down in Florida, so I think he's doing quite well for himself. See the energy and all the possible future talent that comes through here. And you're working with him, so if you could give him one thing or one piece of advice or some kind of knowledge, and they take it and they learn from it, it's kind of a high in its own going, oh, yeah, he got that from me, you know? And that's pretty cool. That's pretty rewarding. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, but he was, yeah. that was just a great role. He was scary. I mean, yeah. it was, you know, um, it was absolutely horror movie level quality villainy yeah. that you got with him. Yeah, it was good stuff. And the thing about him, he's a very talented wrestler, a very talented worker. He really was. Uh, he still is today. He's got great body, still in great shape, still looks good. I saw him like maybe last October. I think the promoter over in Ohio had him here. And like I said, he'll be up in West Virginia this coming weekend. So uh, yeah, I think it's one of those deals where you know he probably stays pretty booked this this time of the year due to oh uh, yeah, I, I bet so, doing the Vampire Warrior or what have you, you know. Banging and banging. <laughs>
Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update.